Okay, Barley, all set? I think so. Body tapes? Yep. This American recorder thing's much neater than ours. It's almost comfortable, in fact. We have the technology. <laughs> Don't forget to switch that damn thing on. Oh, I think she's uh, just arrived. Dark blue larder. Yep. You'd better clear off, then. Good luck. Thanks. Don't forget the presents. Oh, God, I'm in it. I feel like Father Christmas. Here I am, here I am. It is so good, Barley. So good to see you again. It's good to be seen. Welcome to Moscow. <laughs> Strasbourg, Mr. Barley. Strasbourg. <laughs> right, first time. Uh, this is Uncle Matvey. How do you do, Uncle Matvey? Mr. Barley спрашивает, как ты поживаешь? Хорошо. Очень хорошо, спасибо. Садитесь, пожалуйста, впереди. No, 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 no. You stay there. Нет, нет, вы должны скачь и сесть no, 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 no. Tell him to stay there. I'll sit in the back of the kids. Mm -hmm. Матвей, ты можешь остаться здесь. Барли хочет сидеть сзади с детьми. Ну, хорошо. Move over, kids. Ну-ка, подвинься. Не толкайся. Барли, please, meet Anna и Сергей. Поздоровайтесь с мистером Барли, дети. Здравствуйте, мистер Барли. Очень приятно познакомиться. What's this? Are we all going fishing? Perhaps. Sergey always takes his fishing net when we go to the country. And the jam jar. Now let's see what we can find in here. Ah. We've got a pipe for Uncle Matvey. Для меня? Для дяди Матвея, идиот. Ты же не куришь. No, no, no. For Uncle Matvey. Matvey. Вот дядя Матвей. Для меня? Спасибо. Спасибо большое. And for Anna, a, a coloring book oh, and спасибо. crayons oh, and some English chocolates. Oh, she's oh, here. And for Sergey, <laughs> ditto. Bali, you will spoil them. Oh. Yeah, I haven't forgotten you. What is this? Oh, just a few odds and sods, lipstick, perfume, that sort of thing. Nothing spectacular. Bali, you're quite impossible, I think. I could always take them back. That will not be necessary. You're very generous, Bali. Thank you very much. Anna, Sergey, что надо сказать, мистер Bali? Спасибо, Bali. Большое спасибо. Спасибо. Да, благодарю, Bali. Yeah. Let me give you a hand with those. Thank you. Sergey dreams always of catching a fish and cooking it for all of us. And Anna? She draws always picture of Sergey catching nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Great kids. Great day out. Those pies are absolutely delicious. Thank you. Old Matvey is enjoying it too. <laughs> yes. I think he has enjoyed too much of your Scottish whiskey. Who cares? When he wakes, he will be embarrassed, and then he will, of course, tell you about the siege of Leningrad and how he went five days and five nights without sleep. Mm. Ooh, this really is a beautiful spot, isn't it? Yes. Do you come out here often? In summer, yes. I like many others from the city. Yes. Do you think they're waiting for us to move? Who? That couple in the red car. Oh, it is possible. Perhaps we are in their favorite place. Tough. Do you wish to talk now? I'd rather lie here than look at you. Okay, if we must. Uh, yes, I think we must. Yakov was nervous when you met him. Yakov? Oh, sorry, I still think of him as Goethe. Well, yes, I, I suppose he was nervous. I think we both were. Why? He has been very ill. Oh? Yes, quite soon after your meeting he had a sudden collapse. He did not appear at work. He did not appear also at home. His colleagues feared that he might be dead. Who told you that? A trusted friend. Who? Igor. Igor who? Kravchenko. He is a friend of Yakov from Leningrad. Then they were students together. I thought he didn't trust anyone but you. He has appointed me his representative to you. He naturally has other friends for other things. Naturally. Igor telephoned me at home and said I have some medicine for you. Medicine is our code word for a letter. A letter from Yakov. This Igor, what does he do for a living? He's a scientist with one of the ministries. What does it matter how Igor is employed? Did Igor bring you the letter? 
Yes. It is many years since Jakob sent me a letter, and such a letter. I was totally amazed and very happy. It is in Russian, of course. I shall translate it for you. Please. That is the address, then? Yes. He is in a special hospital. He wrote this letter in bed. You see how beautifully he writes when he is sober? Mm -hmm. He gave the letter to a friend who was on his way to Moscow. To Igor? Uh, no, no. To another friend. And he gave it to Igor. Go on. My darling Katya, I have been struck down with some variety of hepatitis, but illness is very instructive and I am alive. That is very typical of him, to draw at once the moral lesson. Yes, of course. He says now, I am now recovered and in two days I shall go to a convalescent unit for a week by the sea. Does he say which sea? No. It is normally the Black Sea. Mm, there I shall be able to do everything except drink vodka. But that is a bureaucratic limitation which, as a good scientist, I shall quickly ignore. Mm. That is also typical, that after hepatitis he should think immediately of vodka. Absolutely. The nurses are beautiful here. He says this to make me jealous, I think. It is most unusual that Yakov comments on anybody happy. Perhaps they've cured him of his pessimism. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> mm, this next piece I will not translate. Uh -oh. He writes only love talk. Does he always do that? It is not even normal that he writes to me. And it is many months, I would say, years since he spoke of our love which is now entirely spiritual. I think perhaps the illness has made him sentimental. So we shall forgive him. Next page. Oh, yes. Now we come to Mr. Barley. What? He does not mention you by name, of course. Very wise. Please let me know in the normal way if our good friend comes back for the book fan. Have you told him? I sent a message soon after your telephone call. Has he been in touch? It is arranged. When for? Katya, when for? Tuesday. He will telephone me. Where? At home? Um, we have a special place. A secret telephone. Okay. What else does he say? He says he is giving a lecture at the military academy in Saratov next week. If he's well enough. If he's fully recovered, yes. He will come as soon as possible to Moscow from there. Yes. He says, mm, if you speak to him before I do, please tell him to bring all further questions, because after this I do not wish to answer any more questions for the grey man. I see. Tell him the list should be final and exhaustive. Mm, and that is all. Hey, what about the rest? I told you, love talk. He is at peace with himself, and he wishes to resume a full relationship. What? What are you? Naturally, it is out of the question. Just like that? What has been, has been. It cannot be restored. Then why does he write it? Why does he shoot a line? Just because he's ill? I do not know. Well, he's not the type to fool around with people's emotions. He prides himself on speaking the truth, doesn't he? Perhaps he's lonely. He is missing me, and he exaggerates. It is normal, I think. Like hell, it's normal. Barley, I think you're being just a little bit... Jealous? Um, I would say so. <laughs> you're right. He sounds fantastic. I'm very happy for him. <laughs> what did she say? She has finished her drawing. It is of Sergei. May I see it, Anna? Anushka, show the rysunek, Mr. Barley. Вот, Mr. Barley. Спасибо. Хорошо, правда? Анна, Анна, это некрасиво так говорить. Oh, it's wonderful. Absolutely superb. You're a very talented young lady. Барли сказал, что это прекрасный рисунок, и что ты умница. Мам! Да? Можно мы построим здесь запруду, чтобы рыба не разбегалась? Сергей wants to build a dam. Yes, why not? Let's all go and help him. 
Хорошо, Сергей, мы все идем и поможем тебе. А я здесь посижу и покажу. Что? Красная машина, ты видишь? Да, конечно. Wave to them, Anna, like this. Помаши, Иман, помаши, помаши. That's it. Oh, pity. They're not waving back. Perhaps they did not see us. No. Right. Let's all help Sergei build his dam. Hi, Barley. Have a nice day? Great, JP. Couldn't have been better. Good, good. You waiting special for me? Well, sort of. I've got a list of invitations to our launch party that I'd like to go through with you. Fine. Let's go up to your room. Hell, I've been up in that goddamned room all day writing them out. Tell you the truth, I feel more like a breath of fresh air. Well, let's take a breath of fresh air. You don't mind? Not at all. That's real friendly of you, Barley. Now, about these invitations. We've got about 150 so far. Just hope to God they don't all accept. Hardly any of them will, but they'll all turn up. Where the hell are we going to put them all? Oh, let Wickler worry about that, eh? The, uh, little lady have a lot to tell you. Masses, old boy. You get it on tape? Every last word. You debrief okay? Fine. The truck should have been back at base ages ago. But the tape's transmitted in all probability. London could well be listening to it by now. There was about three hours of tape. But it'd take no more than a few minutes to transmit. Wow. We have the technology, Barley. Believe me, we have the technology. Well, that's it, everybody. End of tape. Barley kisses Katya, waves goodbye to the kids and Uncle Matvey, and goes back to the truck for debriefing. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. It sounds like original tape. And we've got the lot, start to finish. You're not impressed, Ned? Why has Goethe suddenly taken to writing letters? Isn't that what we all do when we're ill, Ned? Write chatty letters. We don't have them delivered by mysterious intermediaries. Goethe's security conscious to a fault. We know he never writes to Katya. She says as much herself. And suddenly he falls ill and writes her a gushing five-page letter via Igor. Igor who? Kravchenko, wasn't it? A scientist at one of the ministries. That really fills me with confidence. Ned, Ned. And then there was the car. A red car, wasn't it? Yeah. As soon as Barley and the little girl started waving, it left. And another car took over. A white car. You saw it in the watch report. I suspect you're reading too much into that, Ned. On a summer's afternoon, the whole of Moscow would probably take to the countryside. I think Katya made pretty much the same point, didn't she? Indeed she did. Goethe asked for a shopping list. A final and exhaustive list. In Leningrad, all he was interested in was publication. He didn't want to know about our list of follow-up questions. Now, suddenly, that's all he wants to know. Ned, Ned, it's... Doesn't that worry you? For God's sake, relax, Ned. OK, it's day one and we're all a bit jumpy, right? Do you hear me, Ned? I'm not deaf. Look. If we badmouth this operation, it'll never come back. I agree. We're within pissing distance of filling gaps in our knowledge that no smart machines can get within light years of. We have to hang in there. Russell's right, Ned. We're within an ace of landing a coup beyond our wildest dreams. We have only to keep our nerve. As long as Barley keeps his. Right, Harry. As long as Barley keeps his. Barley, my old friend, welcome to Book Fair. You too, Mr. Wicklow. Yuri, just the person I want to see. You come to buy some of my books at last. Why? Have you got anything worth buying? <laughs> Everything. Everything is for sale. We're capitalists now. You've got an envelope there, Len? Uh, sure. For you, sir. Invitation from Potomac and Blair. Thank you. For Wednesday. A few drinks to celebrate our new partnership. See you then. Of course. Thank you, Mr. Wicklow. Hey, Barley, come over here. I've got to sell you a couple of books. Just to annoy up with me. Later, Yuri. Got 150 invitations to deliver. Don't forget, OK? Here we are, Len, the October stand. Are you sure? There's no sign-up. The little fellow in the corner there smoking. Nasayan, October's senior editor. Hmm, can't see Katya. Neither can I, but he's bound to be here somewhere. Why don't I deal with Nasayan while you look for her? Good thinking, Len. <laughs> You are looking for Ekaterina Borisovna, I think. Absolutely. She is unpacking new editions. Over there, behind partition. Thanks, old boy. Mr. Nasayan, can I give you an invitation to the Potomac and Blair party tomorrow night? Katya? Barley! 
How are the kids? Oh, they're very well, thank you. Good, good. They ask all the time when you will come back with more crayons and chocolates. <laughs> good. I'm furious with you. Why? You're a very bad man. You have bewitched my whole family. Oh, that's my speciality. I bewitch people. <laughs> are there any of those pies left over? Pies? You know, from the picnic. Oh, yes. Good. One, I think, perhaps two. I want to come and eat them. Now. That is completely impossible, Bali. There is so much to do, so many invitations. Here's another one for you. Wednesday. Oh, thank you. What about those pies, then? Tonight? Very well. Great. What time? You may come at perhaps half past seven. Be warned. I may be early. Okay. Ah, there you are, Bali. Thought I'd lost you. You have. You and JP are going to have to manage on your own tonight. I'm dining with a beautiful lady. Anyone I know. I doubt it. That was a wonderful meal. Thank you. What's Matthew saying? He's telling the children about the siege of Leningrad again. They know it by heart. Wonderful character. Yes, but he will keep them up all night. It's time they were in bed. Anna, Sergei, быстро спать! Идите сюда и скажите спокойной ночи. Быстро! Мам, кто нам сегодня будет читать? Никто, уже поздно. What did she say? She wants to know who will read them a bedtime story. I would, if I could. Спокойной ночи, Спокойной мама. ночи. Мама. Спокойной ночи, Спокойной мама. Ночи. Скажите спокойной ночи мистеру Барли. Быстро, быстро. Спокойной ночи, мистер Барли. Good night, Anna. Спокойной ночи, мистер Барли. Good night, Сергей. Добрая ночь. They're lovely children, they really are. Yes. Where does Madvi sleep? In the children's room? No, in the main room. He sleeps on an old army bedroll. On the floor? There's nowhere else for him. Then there's nowhere for us? There's my room. You know I love you, don't you? Yes. Mm. I love the children. I even love old Matve. <sighs> Not in the way I love you. My past, my whole life, all the stupid failures were no more than a preparation for meeting you. Shh. What is it? The children may hear us. If they come in, you must be very serious. Uh, Please. Can I tell them I love you? If you do, I shall not translate. Can I tell you? Crying. Are you unhappy? No. Frightened? Perhaps. Why? Tell me. Igor telephoned this evening. And? He called me Katya. That is not normal. He said he had heard nothing. Why does he ring to tell me nothing? I don't know. He said the usual time, the usual place. Why does he repeat what does not need repeating? I have already told him I will be at the hospital at the usual time. What hospital? It is where I receive Yakov's telephone calls. Tomorrow night I'm coming with you to the hospital. No, Bali, no. It will be too dangerous for you. It may also be too dangerous for you. What's wrong with him, Harry? What's his problem? Ned, you mean? Of course I mean Ned. He sits there like a ridiculous, sulky child, radiating pessimism. It's so depressing, Harry. It's the last thing we need at this stage in the well, game. Well, he must be worried about Barney. Aren't we all? And Goethe. Particularly Goethe. But it looks so bad, especially to the Americans. They've invested a great deal in this operation. Yes, I know that. Russell Sheraton has put his whole career at risk on this one. Oh? And now, just as we're coming to the crunch, Ned goes sour on us. Is he losing his nerve? Oh, I wouldn't say that. Well, that's the impression he's giving. Well, what am I supposed to do about it? Talk to him, Harry. Tell him to snap out of it. The way he's going, he's jeopardising the whole operation. You're losing your credibility, Ned. You're seeing ghosts. Am I? Oh, looking for problems that may not be there. Goethe wants a final and exhaustive list. Yes, I know. Why final? Why exhaustive? Hmm? 
well. When Barley met him in Leningrad, he wouldn't even accept our preliminary questionnaire. Now he's asking for the whole shopping list in one go, demanding it. Russell Sheraton's working on that now. The final list. After that, Goethe will answer no more questions. He's telling us this is our last chance. Why? Have some more wine. Mm, thank you. All right. Let's assume the worst. Gert has been turned, the Sovs are running him. Mm -hmm. So why would they close him down? Why not sit back and play us along? Why hand as an ultimatum, create deadlines? Because Goethe might not be presentable anymore. He might not be able to speak or pick up his knife and fork. Or his glass of wine. God bless him. You think that's possible? It's always possible, Harry. Always. So what's the state of play at the moment? In Moscow? Mm -hmm. You heard the tapes. Barley's going with Katya to the hospital to take Goethe's call. Hmm. Was that in the game plan? Not really, but it's OK. Moscow Station will be covering them every inch of the way. Well, then. You've done everything you can. Maybe, but I still don't like it, Harry. Hi, Penny. Everything OK? Touch wood. Barley made the airport station on time. Katia picked him up ten minutes ago in the blue larder. Uh, she was right on time, then. To the minute. We've got two irregulars following, another two waiting at the hospital, and uh, old Anastasia covering the basement and the vestibule. Not much else we can do except wait. Spying is waiting, then. <sighs> Don't remind me. Barley wire for sound? Of course. He'll switch on when he gets in the car. Good. So... How do you like the publishing business? Interesting. I rather fancy myself as managing director of Potomac and Blair. Three, this is one, Sen. Tiger's just arrived. Roger. They've just arrived at the hospital. Another ten minutes before Goethe makes his call. Like I said, spying is waiting. Hmm. Imagine you're a doctor, Bali. You must look very strict. Yeah, I'm a doctor. I feel bloody grim. You should not have come with I me. I had to. You must sit down here. Hmm. Where's the telephone? Here, behind the pillar. The bureaucrats cannot see it, so it is not officially there. How long before he calls? Uh, I would say a few minutes only. He tries always to be punctual. I hope to God he is. He will not speak for long. To speak too long, even between safe telephones, is not sensible. Can I speak to him? It would make him very angry. Why? If they hear English, they will immediately pay attention. It is known. Shh. Is a doctor, huh? Ah, no. We're waiting for our friend. He's on the procedure. Oh, it's so not pretty. Who is that? A cleaner, I would say. Almost definitely a cleaner. Да? Да? Что? Да. Понятно. Угу. What is it? Get her. Get her. Ah. Hang on, Katia. Hold on to me. Hold on. Good, that's right. That's it, I've got you. I've got you. Come on now. Oh, that's your party, Dada, spasiba, spasiba. Come on, Katya. Good, get you away from me. Das vidanie, das vidanie. Das vidanie. One, this is three. Here we go, Len. Three, this is one, send. Doug is just leaving. Man is driving. I'm following. What? Three, this is one. Repeat your last. I repeat. Man is driving. I'm following. Roger. What's Barley up to? He hasn't got a license. You better get over to Katya's place. Is that where they're going? I'll let you know. Right. You know what to do? When Barley leaves her apartment, assuming that's where they're headed, I pick him up and bring him to you. Roger. Your call sign is seven. Seven. See you, Paddy. Where's the third on this bloody thing? Ah. I must go home. I don't know the way. Take me home. Bob. I don't know the way. Tell me. Come on now. Sit up. Help me. Left or right? Which way? Uh, Nelieva, Nelieva. Which way? Left, turn left. Left. Go faster. Hell. Turn 
no! Left, right! Left, left! <laughs> one, this is seven. Seven, this is one. Send. Our pigeons are home to roost. Roger. Confirm cock driving. Roger. Now, don't be all night, Barley, please. Children okay? They're all asleep. Matvey also. Are you going to tell me? Shh. You must not disturb them. In here. What the hell happened at the hospital? Come. Sit here. Beside me. Okay. Now tell me. <laughs> why are you so upset? Was it something you said? Oh, Polly. He will come to Moscow on Friday. He will meet you at Igor's apartment at 11 o'clock on Friday night. So? He will bring more material and answer your questions. Please have a precise list ready. You should bring him news of publication. He loves me all the way. Oh, Katie. What's wrong? It's going exactly to plan, isn't it? They have taken him, Bali. They have taken Yakov. How do you know? He told me. How? What did he say? He used the wrong name. If he uses the name Peter, he is safe. If he uses Daniel, he is taken. And he used Daniel? Yes. He called me also Maria. Maria is how I must call myself if there is danger. Alina, if I'm safe. What were his exact words? Think carefully now. His exact words. This is Daniel. Yes. Is that Maria speaking? Huh. He was telling we are dead. But we are dead. No, we're not, Katya. Yakov was wrong. Trust me. Trust me. Oh, for goodness sake, Ned, stop pacing up and down, will you? Sit down, Ned. Relax. There's nothing we can do to the next transmission. What the devil's he doing? He's been in her flat for, what, two hours now? Perhaps they're having a tender moment. Shouldn't take her that long to tell him what Goethe said, always assuming he made the call. I would have thought he probably did. Otherwise, they would have gone on waiting, wouldn't they? Exactly, Harry. Well said. <sighs> More coffee, anyone? Ned? Uh, no. How about you, Clive? No, thank you. All right? No, thanks. I'm up to here with the stuff. Mm -hmm. And another thing. Why was Barley driving her away from the hospital? She drove him to the place. Geronimo! Coming up on the screen now. Barley's left the apartment, Wicklow going in for the pickup. Paddy next. Excellent. Maybe now we'll get some answers. Hi, Paddy. About time. What kept you? That's what I've been asking. Two hours I was sitting around in the wretched car. What the hell were you up to, Barley? A little Asian welfare, old boy. That's all. I'll pick you up when you've finished here, Barley. Use your procedure. Fine. You'll pass me the word, Paddy. Sure. Agent welfare. Make yourself comfortable, if you can, Barley. Thanks. So, how did it go? Fine, old boy. Everything like clockwork, until old Goethe came through. What time was that? 10.40, on the button. Spoke for about a minute, and then dear old Katia goes and throws a wobbly. Why? God knows. Probably been winding herself up all week, worrying about him, herself, her kids, the whole damn thing. And then suddenly it was over, and she just went pop. But she's all right now. Fine, old boy. Absolutely fine. And Goethe? Coming to Moscow, Friday, bang on target. Friday, uh-huh. Wants to meet me at 11 o'clock that night? 2300. At a friend's flat. That's the address. Igor Kravchenko. Old pal of Goethe's, apparently. Fellow dissident. Okay. Anything else? Yes. As far as Goethe's concerned, it's all systems go. He'll bring me more material, and I'm to bring what he calls news of publication. Presumably, he wants to know dates. That's all. Uh, and the questions, of course. The final shopping list. He asked for a precise list, apparently, 
This will be the last time, he said. OK, I'll pass that on to London. I'd better give you the tapes. Please. Now, my difficult get out. This isn't the easiest place to undress in, is it? I've been in worse. Yeah. <laughs> what about the shopping list, old boy? When will you press that? Into my little hot hand. At the last possible moment. Ooh. That important, is it? You could say that. Oh, hell. What's up? The recorder. The wire's come adrift. What wire? The one that connects to the on-off switch. Look. Let's have a look at the tape. Here. Hmm. Haven't used much tape. About half an hour, I'd say. When did you switch it on? At the metro station, just before she picked me up. And half an hour later, you were where? We'd have been, yes, in the hospital, waiting for the phone call. Ah, that's when she almost fainted. What? Well, she sort of fell against me, grabbed hold of me, clung on like grim death. Well, that could have been it, I suppose. Well, I don't see how... No, no way. Hmm. Is this going to cause problems, Paddy? It depends. Hmm. I'd better get dressed. Yeah. The way I read it, Ned, there was no bad news. Only good news. Only good news. Goethe tells her, I'm well, I'm safe, I gave a great lecture, see you Friday, I love you. And she weeps. Oh, come on. She weeps so much, Barley has to practically carry her out of the hospital. She weeps so much she can't drive. Didn't drive. Then he spends two hours in her flat comforting her for all the good news she's had. Look, your own man Paddy says everything's A-OK. He's not worried. Barley impressed him. He's calm, totally in control. Absolutely, old boy. We're bang on target. Goethe's coming to Moscow on Friday. Everything's fine. Right. That's why she's weeping. Oh, for God's sakes. I hate to say this, Ned, but you're beginning to get on my tits. Da? Katya? Oh. It is you, Barley. Yes. Just ringing to check that you'll be coming to the Potomac Blair party tonight. Yes. Yes. That will be quite convenient. Good. How are you? Well, thank you. And the twins, how are they? They are all well, thank you. Old Matvey still enjoying his pipe? It has already become his favorite. Pleased about that. <laughs> well, see you tonight, then. Yes. Thank you so much for calling, Barley. Goodbye. No need to ask who that was. Oh, just making sure she'd be there tonight. I'm quite looking forward to it. Never been to a publisher's thrash before. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry, excuse me. Ah, Barley. How's your dog? I haven't got a dog, Arkady. Why do you ask? Because it is safer to discuss one's dog than one's fellow human beings. The informers will have good harvest this autumn. Huh? Ask him. Zapadny. He is at peak of his profession, I would say. I'll ask him, Arkady. I want a word with him anyway. Excuse me. Oh, for God's sake, don't tell him I told you. Don't worry, Arkady. I love you too. I damn well hope so. Alec, you old devil. What are you pestering this poor girl about? Oh, me? I could see her blushing from the other side of the room. How are you, Katya? I am very well, thank you. Good. We were having very interesting discussion on human rights, as a matter of fact. I'll bet. <laughs> what is the difference between country that puts few extra people in prison and country that leaves its gangsters at large? You want the polite answer, Alec, or the real one? <laughs> Barley! <laughs> Must go, Alec. See you tomorrow for a farewell snoot. Sure, sure, any time. Uh, Barley, can you spare a moment? Coming! Excuse me, Alec, you too, Katya. Please? Excuse me. Excuse me, please. You are crazy to turn your back on beautiful woman. <laughs> Everything all right? Why shouldn't it be? I don't know. But watch Zappen Day. And tell Katya to watch him too. Oh, come on. Alec's harmless enough. He's just invited me to a farewell snoot. Want me to come along? You're too young. It's for us golden oldies from the days when there was no hope. What time is this snoot? Four o'clock, he said. Seems an odd time for a booze up. Only since Perestroika. I must get back to Katya. Bring her along. Where to? Jack Hensiger's having a little do later on tonight. Everyone on the Potomac and Blair team. Count me out, Lynn. I've got a prior engagement. Apologies to JP, but needs must when the devil drives and all that. Hmm? They OK? OK. All asleep. Come here. I love you, Katya. I love the kids. 
I love old Matve. <laughs> Durak. I love children, uncles, cats, <laughs> dogs, musicians. But not the way I love you. Oh, God. How do I say it? I must have read a million words. And at this moment, none of them are anywhere good enough. Oh, Bali. The only words I want to say are in Russian. Say them. Я люблю тебя. Я люблю тебя. I love you. Yes. Yes. Enough to stand the strain of separation, do you think? I do not think. I know. Then hang on to that. Whatever happens from now on, whatever. Promise me you'll hang on to that. A signal from Langley. Immediate. For you, Mr. Sheridan. Oh, thanks, Dave. Ah. Uh, you respond? Mm, uh, no, 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 no need it. This is fine. All right. I better get back then. Good news, Russell. I can say that. It's the text of a signal's intercept. Oh. Soviet military. Leningrad to Moscow. Copy to Saratov. Anything interesting? <laughs> Very. May I? Sure. Thank you. Hmm. Listen to this, Ned. Professor Yakov Savelyev is authorized to take a recreational weekend in Moscow following his lecture to the military academy in Saratov this Friday. Please arrange transport and facilities. Thank you, Leningrad. May I see? By all means. Thank you. It says here one over one. What does that mean? One over one means one out of one. It's solo. A single message, Clive. No signal either side of it. Not the usual cluster. It's not that unusual, Ned. It just makes it easier to intercept. Ah. It stinks, Russell. They're tossing us a piece of bait. Oh, come on, Ned. Once you start thinking like that, it's pretty damn hard to think any other way. I'm bound to agree, Ned. Sorry. Don't give Barley the shopping list. What? Or Goethe. What the hell are you saying? Abort. Abort? On what grounds? On the grounds that as Ned sees it, everything going our way is the Kremlin plot. Right, Ned? Read the signs, Russell. Do you think I haven't considered that Goethe might turn out to be their asset and not ours? Well, then. I know the stakes, for Christ's sake, Ned. But this isn't the moment for looking over our shoulder. Not unless we have a damn good reason. We're not going that route, Ned. It's my operation and my ass. Then don't give him the shopping list. Why the hell not? Give me proof, Ned. Cast iron proof, not hunches. Remember what you said. Goethe is straight. Your words. And I love you for them. I still do. Goethe is telling the unpolluted truth as he knows it. And my myopic masters are going to have it shoved up their asses even if it turns their balls to water. Do you read me, Ned? Don't give it to him, Russell. We've lost him. Oh, hear me, Ned. You got us into this operation. You and that crazy bastard you call a Joe. So don't try to jump off the tiger at the first goddamn stop. Barley, my dear chap. Oh, look, here, it is most kind of you to call. Uh, but I am most puzzled to know why. You have perhaps uh, some deal you wish to discuss with me. Yes, I do. Ah, I understand. Your Mr. Hensiker is perhaps too greedy. He is a big tycoon, sure, but he is not uh, understanding our world of publishing, I would say. Any chance of a drink round here? <laughs> Alas, Barley, it is more than my life is worth to offer you a drink in the office these days. But you must please uh, sit and let us uh, kick some thoughts around for a few minutes, eh? <laughs> but Alex, does that telephone work? Of course. Listen to me, Alec. I am ready to betray my country, and I'm in a hurry. Barley, what are you saying? I want you to put me in touch with the proper authorities because there are certain conditions that have to be agreed in advance. <laughs> no, but, but, but I have no, no idea what you are talking about. Don't tell me you don't know who to get hold of, Alec. Just do it. <sighs> Okay, Barley. If you say so, I just make one phone call. Okay?
Right, let's synchronize watches. Mm -hmm. In 10 seconds, the time will be 22.50 exactly. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, now. now. We'd better get going, Barley. Yep. Nervous? Wouldn't you be? Probably. Here. The shopping list's built into the text. Thanks. From here to eternity. Very apt. The Americans are treating it like the Holy Grail. So am I. OK, let's go over it once more. Len drops you 500 yards short of Igor's apartment block. As soon as you get inside the apartment, you check it out and you give us the signal that it's A-OK. -okay. Light on, pull the curtains, both ways if I have to, but leave them drawn. Correct. Pick up's the same routine as before. Roger and out. This letter's for Ned in case anything happens to me. It won't. Take it anywhere. OK. Come on, Len. Uh, and don't keep me waiting all night, if you don't mind. Hello, what's happening in here? Hi, Harry. You've been here all night? Unfortunately. We've lost him, Harry. He's gone. Who has? Barley. What do you mean, gone? Didn't he keep his appointment with Goethe? No, he kept it all right. He just never came back. Wicklow waited all night for him. Are you sure he isn't lying drunk somewhere? Out on another bender with Goethe? Like Peradelkin, no? No. He left a letter at the hotel for Len Wicklow. Jack Hensiger got one, too. Quote, Tell them you never trusted me. I didn't trust me, so why should you? Unquote. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. I think we should let everyone go now. What do you say, Ned? Yes, of course. Now hear this, boys and girls. The show's over. Time to put the chairs on the tables and go home. We lost. But thank you all for a fine effort. A tremendous effort. See you around, Harry. Ned, I guess I owe you dinner sometime. Has Clive been told? Oh, yes. Took off with the first sign of trouble. I should think he's halfway to setting up a committee of inquiry. Pontius Pilate had nothing on dear Clive. Not another bloody committee. It'll roll on for years. Excuse me. Hello up there. I say, um, por favor. Signor Barley Blair. Does Signor Barley Blair live here? Okay. Signor Barley Blair. Hello, so, uh, uh, Barley, is that you? Harry? It is. Dear old Harry. Come for a game of chess, old boy. Well, came for a chat, actually. Official? Uh, sort of. I wondered how long it would take. You'd better come up and have a snort. To be perfectly honest, Harry, I don't think the Russians really knew what to do with me. Shunted me from one place to another until in the end they got fed up with me. Put me on a plane to Lisbon. We thought you might end up here. So we asked our Lisbon station to check this place out from time to time. Let us know if you ever resurfaced. So why have they sent you? To take me back in chains? Oh, not at all. <laughs> no, they simply asked me to tidy things up, get some answers and assurances out of you, give you some in return. I've got all the assurances I need, thanks. The sobs never go back on a handshake, and I've promised to keep my mouth shut. God bless. Cheers, old boy. We're grateful for what you tried to do for us. As far as we're concerned, you acted very honourably. Everybody talks under duress, and you are no exception. Bollocks. I talked of my own free will. Still, we are aware of the cost to you, professionally and personally. We're concerned that you should have your fair measure of compensation. On, on terms, of course. Terms. Conditions, then. The sum involved could be quite large. Hmm. Was the fallout very bad, Harry? Well... Internally, within the department, it was prolonged and spasmodically painful. For you? For all of us. Ned was the principal casualty. Sorry about that. I really am. 
internationally, the whole operation was, well, quietly swept under the carpet. Both sides pretended it never really happened. Both? Well, Moscow didn't want to rock the boat any more than we did. Goethe paid the price, though. Yes. Professor Yakov Sovelyev died of natural causes shortly after delivering a successful lecture to the military academy at Saratov. And that was the official line. Goethe was a lost cause, Harry. There was nothing I could do for him. No. But Katya, she was still savable. Was that the deal? Katya for the shopping list. Katya, the twins, old Matfi, real people in exchange for unreal arguments. Will they stick to their side of the bargain? They promised. The Sovs always keep that promise. In publishing, maybe. Katya still works in October, doesn't she? She still has her flat and her privileges. The twins still go to school. Old Matfi still relives the siege of Leningrad every night. No, oh, for once in my life, Harry, I hammered out a first-rate contract. I only hope you're right. No, oh, she'll come, Harry. They promised that one day they'll let her come. Maybe this year. Maybe next. But it'll happen. They promised. <laughs> 